because the choice, I guess, it sounds like either you could be a victim of your yes. of your past and a victim of your circumstances, or you can create a future. Yes. And uh, so it's it's literally because you talked about as you know choices, mindset choices, right? So you just you know, it's as simple and probably as hard as making that choice. Yes. Make make the choice. Yeah. I I choose not to be a victim. Mm -hmm. I choose not to dwell on the past. I have the mindset that. I can go out and learn almost anything. I, I mentioned this to you before. I'm I'm fortunate that I've, you know, my adult career when the internet came on the scene, and everything that you ever want to know is is on the internet. Right. And so for me, that's helped me immensely in in trading uh, stocks. You know, I would say 65% of my net worth in life has come from trading stocks, and it was all just self-taught from. I'm still blown away that you can study a publicly traded company and they have their quarterly earnings on there. Or you can listen to the earnings call. Right. You can study their annual report. All these things. I'm like, okay, this is this is like legalized drug dealing. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're trading, and are you doing like more long-term investing? Or are you like you know trading short-term? You know, I'm not a day trader. Uh, I, I have a rule for me personally. And again, no one ever taught me the rules. So there's been times, Patrick, where I've had 90% of my net worth in one trade. No one ever said that you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> so uh, I have a rule that if I make a trade, I have to be willing to hold it for at least 12 months. Now I may exit early if I if I you know hit the numbers and, and what what I want to make out of the trade, but I have a rule that a lot of times I get to the party early, and mm -hmm. what I mean by that is if I foresee something that's going to happen, it may take 12 months for that to happen. So my my rule is if you're going to get into the trade, you have to stay in it at least 12 months. So now let's say that um, somebody who's worked a lot of years, I've accumulated some money. Um, I don't see retirement really as an option because uh, I'll start burning through that capital and I don't know how long I'm going to live and I want to leave some for my kids, etc. Um, so do you feel like uh, the stock market is a place to be able to take that money and have it grow? Uh, in other words, do you feel like you have this unique and special gift? Do you feel like you just put the time in to really learn how to do this? And uh, I, There's zero. I struggle to say this. I don't believe there's anything special about what I do, mm -hmm. especially given where I've come from. Now, I've got those around me, Tucker, Zach, our, our tribe of people who continuously tell me, like, JT, you know, there's, there's kind of something special uh, about you. And I struggle just because of my background. Mm -hmm. But I will say most of what I know and what I've done has just been a commitment to putting in the time and effort, mm -hmm. e even now. I love golf, mm -hmm. but I haven't played in two and a half years because I've got little ones. Mm -hmm. And so you have to make a decision. Four and a half, five hours on the golf course, time with family. Mm -hmm. And so my life comes down to God, health, family, uh, investing, and the business. And those are the things that, that I focus on. So much so that I disconnected from our direct TV. I took ESPN off. Mm. I love college football. I love NFL, but it's not progressing me to to where I want to go. So I don't I don't have it on t on the TV. And answering your question in a, in a long winded fashion, but I believe people can accomplish what they want to. But you have to put in the time and effort. Mm. You know, this didn't just happen for me o overnight. You know, I've been doing this for for years and studying. I went five years one time where I didn't even buy a new pair of uh, underwear, uh, no T-shirts, no socks, nothing. I bought nothing new. Every dime, and I mean every dime, I would put into trading. Mm. And so, for me, I, I do believe that anyone can learn. What, what I do, there's nothing special about it. You need to put in the time, you need to put in the, the effort and be willing to sacrifice. Unfortunately, you, you know this, mm -hmm. we live in a country where people don't want to sacrifice. Yeah, and that's why I keep hearing is that you're willing to, you know, severe discipline, and like you said, it's choices. Yeah. Do I want to watch NFL football or do I want to go make more money? Exactly. And, and, and sometimes I think you're exactly right. You know, People feel like, well, no, I, I don't want to give up these other things to go, you know, create more wealth for myself. Right. 
and you know the consequence of which is then they stay in mediocrity or, or in a place that they don't feel fulfilled in. But then they, but here's the damnest thing: then, then they have the audacity to complain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, and, and I'm blown away by that. Yeah. You know, you, think of this: this is how bad some of the pieces of our society are. And I've gone on this rant before. People will stand in line overnight, 24 hours, for the new iPhone. Right. That does two new things that the phone you already have does. Right. We as a society have the audacity to celebrate and have cameras on site for the first person that walks out with a new iPhone. When's the last time you've heard anybody all night study their financial future? Right. When's the last time, you hear this one, blown away by this, binge watching. It's become a term. Yeah. What'd you do this weekend? Oh, Friday night we started watching Game of Thrones season one and we went through season 38 by <laughs> Sunday, never left, ordered pizza, didn't move the cat. When's the last time someone said they binge studied their financial future? Mm. Never. But like you said, then people want to complain. And they want it to magically appear. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so yeah, how come I'm not making out, but it's like, because you know, you're binge watching Game of Thrones. Right. Yeah. So while you're binge watching Game of Thrones, I'm sitting there studying some company's quarterly earnings, their yeah. annual report, trying to figure out, okay, why, why is this stock doing this? Okay, why did these three executives just leave? Oh, you filed bankruptcy, but you've got $4 billion on the books in cash. You're not really bankrupt. You're doing something else that's going on. Yeah. But you're watching Game of Thrones, which does absolutely nothing for you but entertain you. Great. Yeah. And if that's what to you want. To distract you from right. life. Yeah. And, and I'm not knocking it. Yeah. If you want to binge, do, but don't complain about what you don't have afterwards. Right. Your current net worth, how much of that comes from your stock trading activities versus other business activities? Six, 65% of my net worth comes from stock trading. And the rest has come from obviously salaries and, and uh, bonuses and things of that nature. But the great majority of my, my net worth is from stock trading. And you're trading your own money. Not other My own money. Yeah. Wow. So uh, now you're up against, I mean, pros. I mean, people who literally, uh, you know, I mean, big banks, institutions, et cetera, because, you know, they're studying the same stuff you're right. studying. So what, what do you think gives you the ability to compete with those people? You know, I, I do my best not to compare myself to the guy that's got the Harvard MBA that works at Goldman Sachs. I've always been tr intrigued and I always thought, man, I'd love to work at Goldman. Yeah. Uh, but I just do what works for me. And I, my, my philosophy is what's the story? And, and you heard me mention this a minute ago. I'll give you one of my favorite trades I, I ever made. When American Airlines filed bankruptcy, I thought, oh man, again, I'm 46 years old. I remember Eastern Airlines, Pan Am, it's TWA. It, yeah. I remember those airlines going out of business. And then I thought, okay, here's American filing bankruptcy. And I was blown away by it. But then I saw they had $4 billion on the books. Like nobody files bankruptcy <laughs> if you have $4 billion. And come to find out, there was a multitude of reasons why. There were the pilot, uh, the union contracts, there were the flight attendants. I didn't even know the baggage handlers had a union, and they were there as well. Stock went down to about 25 cents. Mm. And I said to myself, huh, $4 billion, no one files bankruptcy for that. So I bought stock at 35 cents. Mm -hmm. Shortly thereafter, they got approval to buy new jets. And I was like, ah, see, no one's filing bankruptcy here. You, you all are trying to do some restructuring, but you're not filing bankruptcy. You're not going out of business. And so my goal was to go from 35 cents to a dollar, and I was going to get out. When they got approval to buy the jets, the, the stock went up to a little over a dollar. And I said, okay, I'm going to hold this. Mm -hmm. Then word started coming out of a possible merger with them in U.S. Airways. Stock went to three, stock went to five. So long story short, I sold all the stock at about 13 and change. Wow. Yeah. From 35 cents. From 35 cents. That's the one to talk about for sure. Yeah. And, and, and so for <laughs> yeah. me, I, I want to know what's the story. Sure. Now, I'll give you another one. Um, my favorite short of all time was GoPro. Mm -hmm. I could not understand the business model. I knew it was the hotness, everybody had a GoPro camera, but you it was a one trick wonder. Mm -hmm. All you had was a camera. Right. 
how often does someone need to go buy a new camera? My wife and I even went in. She hates when I do stuff like this. Uh, I went in and went and bought one. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to see what was the hype. We didn't particularly care for it, took it back. And so right around $71, I shorted the stock. Mm -hmm. And people thought I was a fool. They said, oh, you're dumb, you're dumb. Well, stock kept going up. Somewhere between 80 and 81, the stock took a turn and started dropping. If you go look at GoPro right now, it's sitting somewhere at like five and change. It's been wow. as low as four. And, in the, in, and there's even talk that they've sought out uh, Chase to find a buyer for, mm -hmm. for them. And the story for me, though, was you only do one thing. Right. There's no reoccurring revenue. There's no, you know, how often does someone need to buy a new camera? So it, it just, I call it common sense, what's the story? And that's, that's how I look at, at trading.